Welcome to my introduction to networking course, typically abbreviated ITN. This will be for the CCNA version 7 curriculum. Okay, so this is lab 1.5.5, Packet Tracer Network uh, representation. This is the first lab in this series. So again, first thing you want to do is read the objective. Basically, we're going to be looking at this model to incorporate as many technologies that we're going to be mastering throughout the CCNA study. This one is not your typical CCNA course, specifically because it's more of an exploratory based lab. Not really configuring anything, but more of a just looking around and answering based questions. So uh, first of all, let's look at part one, identifying common components of a network as represented in Packet Tracer. The icon toolbar at the bottom left has various categories. So two rows, top row, network devices, in devices, components, connections, miscellaneous, multi-user. You'll notice as we click the top row, the bottom row changes. So I'm going to click on network devices. And then the bottom row is going to be routers, switches, hubs, wireless devices, security appliances, and WAN. And if we go to PC or in devices, we can now see computers, laptops, whatnot. We can see home items for IoT. We can see smart city, industrial power grid and most of that's way outside the scope of this course this course we're focusing predominantly on networking devices routers and switches and in devices pcs and laptops and servers under the network devices we may also get into a little bit of wireless and one of more the advanced courses and the next is our wired connections do not use the automatic wire, the lightning bolt. If you mouse over the cables, it tells you in the center bottom of the screen what they are. Like this blue cable is a uh, blue cable is a console cable. The black solid line is a copper straight through. Black dotted is a copper crossover. Then this orange looking straight line is fiber and so forth. So that gives you the brief overview of what each of the categories are. All right, so let's go through some of these questions. Uh, let's do uh, the intermediate devices. Again, that's gonna be the routers, the switches, the hubs, the access points. So the next one that I'm looking at is this part right here. Without entering the internet cloud or the intranet cloud, that's these two, how many icons in the topology represent end devices? So I'm not going to be cabling anything, I just want my mouse. In the home office, we have a tablet, a PC, a desktop, and an inkjet. So those are four in the home office. In the centralized office, we have a server, PCs 1, 2, 3, and 4. Because again, it says endpoint devices, not connecting devices. Branch office. We have the server, the laser printer, the smartphone, the laptop. We have a phone, accounting, another phone, and cells. So this one has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight in branch, five in central, four in home office. Without counting the two clouds, how many icons in the topology represent intermediary devices? basically multiple connections. So home office, we have our intermediate devices, our wireless router, and you could say our cable modem. For our central office, we have a one switch, router two, we have D1, D2, S1, S2. So there are six devices here. In the branch office, we have router 4, switch 4, access point. So we have three of those devices. How many end devices are not desktop computers? So these computers are desktops. So in central, 
of the five, one of them is not a desktop. In the branch, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, there's eight devices. Six of them are not desktops. Only the two PCs down here are. So that means the other six are other than desktop machines. Small office, home office, there are four devices. Three of them are not desktops. One of them is desktop. How many different types of media connections are used in the network? Well, I see a black solid line. I see a red serial line. I see a wireless connection. So for that, there's only three different main categories used so far in this topology. All right, so that completed part one. I'm going to scroll down. Let's look at part two. In Packet Tracer, only the server device can act as a server. Desktops and laptops cannot. Based on your study so far, explain the client server model. So, client server model typically means there is a centralized device housing a resource that's serving that resource. Could be a web server, could be a DHCP server, could be a DNS server, it could be many other forms of servers. You have clients, desktops and laptops, that request those resources from those servers. List at least two functions of an intermediate device, intermediary device. They provide a connectivity for the network. Leaving the network is one of the big components there. Switches allow for local communication. Routers allow for outside your primary network communication or remote network communication. To see, list at least two criteria for choosing the network media type. Well, realistically, the three main types, fiber, copper, wireless, Fiber is expensive, but it goes far. Copper is relatively cheap, but it doesn't go as far. Wireless is kind of in between, but its range is subjective. It depends on the type of wireless being implemented. Often than not, most businesses are looking at a combination of copper and wireless. You can have the networks joined together, so a Wireless network is just an extension of a copper network that definitely does uh, exist. All right, so that completes it for part two. Part three, explain the difference between a LAN and a WAN. Give examples of each. A LAN is local. So central, everything inside central is local to central. That's a LAN. Branch, everything local or inside the square of branch is local to branch. Same thing for the home office. LAN is for local communication. WAN is an outside or remote network. So the internet is a giant WAN. The intranet between our centralized and branch location, that's a WAN connection. WAN typically denotes outside of your network. In Packet Tracer, how many WANs do we see? Well, we can say that we see probably one, two, three, four ish WAN connections. So between central and branch, it depends on how we want to describe this, this could be one continual WAN, but with that cloud intranet there, it, we could just say that that is two. One from R2 going to the internet, and one from R4 going through the internet. Also, R2 to the internet, R4 to the internet. We can also say that there are two WANs, because the network that R2, R4, and the home office are all connecting to, that could be one giant WAN. So it really depends on how we want to look at this. How many LANs are there? Well, our, the R2 network, that is this network down here. That's this guy, the central network. That's one network. Branch is its own separate network. So that's two. 
Home Office stats, three. So there are three LANs. The Internet and Packet Tracer network is overly simplified and doesn't represent the structure. Describe the Internet. The Internet is a collection of intermediary devices that allow communication between multiple networks and multiple devices. That way, there can be shared communication globally. What are some common ways a home user connects to the internet? Could be copper broadband, could be copper DSL, could be wireless like via satellite, could be wireless via LTE or 5G or a hotspot. Those are some of the more common ways to connect to the internet for a small home office. What are some uh, common methods that the business will use the connectivity to the internet? E-commerce, email, communication via phone, all of uh, website traffic, all of those typically directly relate to business communication or business's primary function. All right, so that takes us care of part three. And now let's look at our challenge question section. All right, so challenge question one. At the end of the device, to the topology and connect it to one of the LANs with a media connection. What does the device need to send data to the other end devices? Can you provide the information? Is there a way to verify the connectivity of the device? All right, so I'm gonna add an end device like a computer. I'm gonna add it with a straight through. Connect to my switch. Notice it goes green. I'm going to click on my PC, go to my desktop, go to IP configuration. And I'm going to request it as DHCP to see if it will give me an address. And lo and behold, a request was sent and it successfully came back with IP information. So. I'm going to verify by pinging the default gateway. And you know what? I'm going to start with an IP config. Ping 0.3.0.1. That will be my router. And lo and behold, it works. You have to have an IP address either manually assigned or statically assigned, but you have to have an IP address. I'm gonna put another PC on our branch, connect it with a straight through. Can go into that PC, go to IP configuration, again, change them both to static. And again, it pulled an address. So it looks like DHCP is present. So we are getting our address information automatically. So challenge question one, done. Add a new intermediary device to one of the networks and connect it to one of the LANs or WANs with a media connection. What does the device need to serve as an intermediary device to other devices in the network? All right, so I'm gonna drag up a router Well, these routers happen to need a serial card. So I turned it off. I'm going to zoom in. I turned it off. Put the serial card in. Turned it back on. I'm going to connect it with a serial cable, a red cable. I'm going to plug it into one of the serials. You'll notice it's red. That is because by default it is turned off. See a light still turning on. I'm going to mouse over so I plugged it into, in my example, I keep mousing over it so you'll see it says serial 0, 2, 1. 
So that's what I'm going to do. Is I'm going to navigate to that interface. Enable. Conf T. And serial 0 slash 2 slash 1. No shutdown. Turns it on. I'm underneath that interface. I'm going to do IP DHCP. No oh, IP address DHCP. All right, apparently does not like that. All right, so that's just a bug, but you would need to get an IP address if you are connecting. Otherwise, no one will be able to reference the device. So what else does the device need to serve as an intermediate device to other devices in the network? First of all, it needs an IP address that's addressable on the network. All right, last one, open a new instance of Packet Tracer, create a network with at least two LANs connected by a WAN, connect all the devices and investigate the original Packet Tracer activity to see what else you need to make the uh, network functional. I'm gonna let that be up to you guys. You guys don't need me to do that, but this at least gives you a brief overview of looking at Wireshark, exploring some of the functionality if you have any questions or concerns, please reach out. Thank you. If you have any questions or anything, please feel free to reach out. Again, with this material, being able to ask questions and discuss some of the topics in the lecture help build long-term retention, so do not be afraid to communicate with this topic. Again, I'm here if you need anything. Thank you.